We are back here in Alto Cero Sesenta with Dr. Tracy Wooden talking about uh, uh, job trends for 2014. She's the author of a new book uh, to basically advise people how to keep employed for the next 50 years. That's a great title, by the way, Dr. Wooden. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, and I, I really, truly believe that people are living longer, and they'll be working longer for the next 50 or 60 years, so it's important. Yeah, and uh, some, especially young kids today with the internet and like things that, the immediacy of everything, sometimes don't, they, they don't really uh, realize how long it takes to become uh, well-trained uh, and to get all the expertise to do that. I mean, like... We say that in, in pretty fast, 50 years, stay, stay employed for 50 years, but 50 years is a long time. Absolutely, if you think about it, and I drive, and you drive a lot, there was a billboard on the freeway on the East Coast that said a baby born today will live to 120. And I said, oh my goodness, that means that, that poor thing will be working for <laughs> over half their life. And, uh, you know, 60 or 70 years, what is that person going to do, right? They really need to prepare for that. Yeah, and it's, a, in a way, I mean, uh, thinking if, if you are going to live over 100 years, it's, it's like a great thing. But also it's kind of scary, I mean, because you have to provide for yourself, for your family, for uh, your community. So you have to be prepared, right? Yes, in fact, they said, you know, the American dream used to be owning a home. But the American dream today is the ability to afford to retire. And um, it shows you how quickly life has shifted. Um, but the big, the big worry today is, can I take care of myself and my family and in my retirement? So um, that's, that's why I'm so dedicated to keeping people employed and in fruitful careers for the long time haul. Excellent. So, Dr. Willie, we are talking to our show. It's about cars, so, and uh, we're talking about the future here also. So, um, the future more or less has uh, caught up with uh, with times, and now we're seeing in cars new technologies that uh, we didn't think they were going to be possible. I mean, only in the Jetsons, like uh, cartoons <laughs> back in the day. And now we're seeing cars that uh, run with electricity, cars that run with hydrogen, cars that... Uh, might get solar energy at some point and this is another field where a lot of especially young kids should look at that at, uh, as an alternative to go to school right and like and again like make sure that they're going to be employed for at least 50 years right so actually you know one of the points is that i was talking to recruiters is that the energy industry is also in transformation uh, now the jobs might be very localized and specific but a lot of it is around, and it really lends to the auto industry, is that there's much more interest in using alternative energy sources for, for many of the things that we do, such as using natural gas, as you mentioned, electric, hybrid, solar, or even wind. But at the same time, there's also the advancement in just oil production and gas efficiency. So there's a whole opportunity there if people are interested in energy, uh, and renewable energy to look at that as, as opportunities for career and employment because it's, it's, it's an exciting new area and it's changing daily and it can be a whole new opportunity for young people. When, uh, when you're mentioning that some of these jobs are localized uh, specifically in different areas, uh, where, where is that? Because, I mean, nowadays as we were uh, talking in the previous segment, I mean, we live in a pretty much uh, global uh, world now and everybody is connected. So wh where are these localized jobs for these kind of uh, alternative energy uh, solutions? So, you know, I was uh, researching about auto-centric cities uh, because this is the second area where recruiters were saying, you know, there are opportunities and jobs in the auto industry, but it is very localized. In fact, the auto industry had increased 16 million jobs uh, this past fall. And so I said, well, where are the top places that are hiring? And here's what they came up with is Detroit, Oshkosh, Chicago, Minneapolis, and Toledo. And, and I'll tell you another point that they brought to my attention is that there is a resurgence in people wanting to have products made in the U.S. And that is starting to become a reality because the cost of manufacturing has been going down because of technology. I mean, you think about it, you can have a robot called Baxter that's made in the United States, 
for $30,000 a year on your manufacturing line. And that's cheaper than sending it overseas for many people. Yeah. So there's a lot of reason why manufacturing is returning to the U.S. and opportunities are opening up in the auto industry. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned Detroit, Chicago, Ohio, and like some of these, uh, the companies are relocating to these areas. I mean, obviously, the, the three big of Detroit, uh, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler, uh, have solved, uh, thankfully, all their financial problems for now, and they're doing great. So even though the city of Detroit is not doing that well, the car manufacturers are gonna, probably going to help to to revamp the city, right, with all these uh, new jobs. And like for some people, that that will be... A, a great alternative to to move to, even though I mean, especially now in the winter, <laughs> it'll be better if they could be in South Cal in South uh, California as you are. No, that's that's correct. In fact, in um, Northern California where I live, we have uh, Tesla. Right, the plant is there, so there are opportunities. And again, it's just localized. What's happening in your your neighborhood? Then the second is always look at adjacent industries. What other industries does the auto industry impact, and what kind of new jobs are created there? Is it service centers? Is it through selling? Is it through the call center? Is it through repair? What kind of industries um, should I think about looking at if I'm interested in cars? I mean, I mentioned the Mini Cooper, but are there's many Mini Cooper dealerships throughout California, and then there's also many service centers as well. So every car has other opportunities related to it. Yeah, uh, and you mentioned Tesla, and uh, not only the car is, uh, has an alternative uh, 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 source of, uh, of uh, energy with uh, electric batteries, but uh, I mean, they're also trying to change the way people buy cars. I mean, they're showing up with uh, studios at shopping centers and like uh, even like fighting some uh, dealership associations in some different states where they are not liking that system. So that's a completely game changer, not only for the car itself, which is uh, great also, but also the way the business is changing in that sense, the way they approach people and they are trying to sell their cars. You know, and I think that's a really interesting point because in Northern California where I live, I see a lot of Tesla cars everywhere and people love them. I'll tell you what, people hate to negotiate with a dealer. The whole car buying process has really alienated a lot of people. It's, it's, it's somewhat of a negative experience. So when I look at Tesla and I see them in the malls and having a storefront, they're reaching out to me like a consumer. And that's, a, for me, a much more warm and welcome way for me to buy a car. Because let's face it, a car is a very expensive item. I believe that dealers certainly have a role in it, and I know that General Motors works with the dealers to try to soften the interface with the consumer, but I think Tesla just really made a statement out there saying, look, the, it's, it's a big purchase, it's, it's a consumer purchase, and it's a retail purchase, so why aren't we treating it in that way? So interesting stuff that Tesla's doing for sure. Yeah, and, and I mean, unfortunately, uh, the, the dealership as we know them today are not going to change uh, anytime soon. But uh, in that terms, I mean, what would you recommend to, to dealerships, uh, to people who want to get into that business too? I mean, how can they really become better at that at that position because as you said it is like the probably and it's hard to say it because i mean they're the most important part of the of the industry too but it, they can also be the the least uh, um, appealing like the, the, something that will turn you out of even a brand forever i mean if you have a bad experience one time you'll remember that forever so what would be your recommendation for people who want to be in that that field which is still pretty profitable right selling new cars yeah, so, you know, it's sales, right? And people know that people want to buy from people who they know and they like. Um, so it's a positive experience instead of a negative experience. So I encourage people in any sales industry to remember that people buy from people. Number two is, it, you know, online e-commerce is in. So we need to be able to provide a lot of information and a lot of transparency around the products and services that we offer to people. So let them understand the cost. It isn't walking in the back room and doing a tough negotiation. It's here's the cost of, of what it is to buy a car. And I think people can digest information and knowledge. And number three is, remember, we're a very mobile world. People want to use apps. 
and they want to use their mobile smart devices to be able to get information, whether it's how to get to the car or how to use the car or how to buy the car. So I think that we really need to translate uh, marketing our cars into, into terms that people use today. Yeah, and like, and again, like, try to make it as as uh, comfortable more than anything, right? Like, and transparent because if if you go to a dealership and you feel cheated in in any way, I mean, that's an experience that is going to live with you, as, as your book says, like uh, about employment. This uh, bad experience can live with you for the rest of your life. Oh, absolutely! I think the customer experience is even more important today because of social media. You know, buzz can kill you or buzz can, you know, increase your sales. And people do talk and share on all of the social medias, Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and Google Plus, and they, they share about their buying experiences. They share about what they like about their car or what they don't like. They share about their dealer experience. And so I think it's, it's, it's even more volatile today and pervasive than in the past. So it's something to pay attention to for sure. Yeah. We're talking to Dr. Tracy Woolen. She's the author of uh, the new book about uh, employment for life. And uh, we'll be back in the next segment to talk about women in the auto industry. And General Motors uh, just named the first woman ever to lead that company. So don't go away. We'll be back here at Auto 060. I'm Javier Mota.